Hello everybody, this is Michelle Cahill with Pet Portrait Fun and today we're going to be doing a fun pet portrait of this little dog Charlie. Um, the owner sent me that photograph, I'll show you right here, of Charlie and we're going to be doing his pet portrait. This is what um, I did for the customer. I, they sent me a picture of Charlie. I drew it for them, sent it back to them so that they could join us today. They have their own um, art supplies, so we're going to just let them uh, join us with, if you don't have your art supplies, that's not a problem either. We can send the whole do-it-yourself kit with everything included in the frame, including the little do-it-yourself step-by-step -step that I do customize for all of my customers and um, the original drawing. And we also, so they do the drawing, trace it onto the Art. <laughs> hey, everybody's joining me. Thanks for stepping in. I also wanted to show you this. Um, this is a little book I put together of some of my art that I did for the last uh, two years. I, I put them together every two years. These are some of my more elaborate um, pet portraits that I did. I made it into a little bit of coffee table book. And you, you know, basically, I have the pictures of the dogs, tell a little bit of a story about what the uh, customer asked for. These are my pen and ink and watercolor uh, pet portraits. So put them all together in a customized book for uh, you know for myself and just to show to other people. And sometimes people who are featured, their pet portrait was featured in here, they ask for. Here I also did a lot of charcoal this year of people with their pets. Um, here's some of them, a little bit of customers with their pet portraits. Did some live charcoal events and Again, a little bit some of these so these was uh, a little book that I put together of wanted to share with you guys so let's start anyway on little Charlie Charlie is this little uh, dog he looks like a Nova Scotia duck hound I'm gonna mix um, he's orange so I'm gonna mix um, that color first he's got this white uh, piece on him. let me see so you can see that a little bit better he's got this uh, white on his face uh, so we're gonna leave that blank. I would say if it's white in the uh, up, the fur is white, you're just going to leave that like the paper. So I'm mixing right now. Um, I'm just using a Crayola. But I, uh, you can buy them at Staples or Amazon. This is just like a regular. Or you could use Artist Grade. I just uh, show everybody with Crayola because it's easy. It's less intimidating and everybody can get one. So let's start with every everywhere that is orange, his fur here his legs I'm just gonna do kind of an undertone so with watercolor you just kind of do a buildup of the lightest colors first so just gonna kind of fill all that in we'll go back over and do um, a little bit of dark on top of that later but right now I might actually mix a little bit of brown it's uh, so it's not so brilliant especially in there Hope everybody's doing well. We got my uh, little birdie is well in the background. He's mad that he's caged up. <laughs> he wanted he wanted to be featured. Not today, little birdie. So okay, so I'm filling this all this color. And what I did before, just to give you an idea, I took my paper towel and I dripped like one or two drops into each color. And I use this paper towel as like um, a bit of an eraser. If it's too dark or the color drips or anything, paper towel is your friend when you're doing watercolor. So this dog has a little jacket on, and it's it's kind of a brown jacket. I would say you you can do the pit portrait like the photograph, or since it's your art, you can do you can have fun and make it a little bit um, more colorful or something. I'm gonna make it a different color. I'm not sure sure what I'm gonna make it just yet. It, he's in front of these stairs and I kind of wanna make them the stairs purple. So try to do a color that's the opposite. Something that'll make the, him really pop off the page. And he's got this orangey fur. This is pretty, if it's, it's, if it's too dark, if it's not the color that you want, like I said, you just take your paper towel and just dab it a little bit like that remove some of the color like that so just gonna go around his whole his eyes I always leave 
you'll see in the drawing, I believe a little bit of a triangle um, for the eyes. So a little bit of white. So the, that makes that eye really pop, that little sharp piece of white. So go in there. Just leave in that whole muzzle. I'll go, go back over that in a second. So this little guy. And like I said, I'm just mixing orange. I just put a teeny bit of brown in there because uh, just so it doesn't, the Crayola colors are pretty brilliant. Um, they're pretty vibrant. So to like muddy them up, if you want to make them look a little bit more natural, you could add a little bit of the brown in there. But it's okay to have like a nice colorful, again, always, uh, you always have your wet paper towel if it's not the color that you, uh, you prefer. But so, and I'm just, Dipping my uh, brush into a bucket of water I have here, just so you know. I, I like to use a big bucket so that when the water starts to get dirty, it's, you know, you don't have, the water doesn't start to influence the color of the, what you're painting. All right, so I'm just filling out, and then it's, his whole fur here is going to be the same kind of thing. So I'm just almost filling in that space. Now this was, um, what I did with him before was I traced him on uh, with a carbon uh, paper. If you don't have carbon paper, you can always um, just take a pencil and rub the back of the printout that I, that I email you. And you can trace with a hard pencil back on top of the watercolor paper. And this is a 140 pound paper watercolor. It's the, it's the basic kind that you get in any uh, watercolor pad. It just absorbs the, <clears throat> the water a little bit better than just... You don't want to do watercolor on like regular paper or even um, poster paper because it doesn't absorb the water like this. There's a little bit of cotton in the mixture, believe it or not. That's why watercolor paper is a little more special. See how it's dripping near the bottom? I just take a little bit of paper towel and just so those pools don't start dripping. I always say make sure that you do your uh, watercolor flat on the ground. I'm doing it upright so you guys can see it better. But see, because then these little drifts start to come. You just take your paper towel, just dab it, soak it up, soak it up. So he's, he's his little, let's just finish up his background here. And his feet and his tail. So don't let that dry for a little bit. Let me go into his jacket. Um, he's got these red little uh, corners of the, the jacket, so I'm kind of like thinking maybe I'm going to make his the full jacket, maybe like a navy blue. That'll look nice because that's kind of the opposite of orange. So I'm just going to fill in. He's got a blue jacket and that'll look nice when I do the purple steps. So just gonna again just filling it in. We're gonna go back on top of it and do the details. And just fill it in. So you want to make sure your brush is not too sloppy wet because then it'll drip. And the thicker, the less water you have on your brush, the darker the color will be. So I'm going right up to the edge. He's still wet, so I'm kind of leaving that little. I'm gonna leave a little white edge there just because I don't want it to drip into it because then the colors start to bleed into each other. You know, just for time, that's why I'm just... But otherwise, I would, I would most likely just let that dry before I went up to the edge of him. And just go right around his edges here. Fill his little navy, navy jacket. And it comes down around the back here, so just kind of follow that little guy. He's cute sitting on the steps. Mommy, where did you leave me? <laughs> oh, he's, he'll be happy once his, he sees his pet portrait done. So I have these events all around uh, the city. Um, I'm, I hold them at the Barking Dog, which is here on the Upper East Side. So if you want to join me live, um, you can sign up and just send me a photograph of your pet, and we can schedule a time if you're in Manhattan. Um, we also could do them in Central Park. I uh, hold paint your pets there too. And both places, dogs are welcome. So you can bring your pet and paint with your pet, which is always fun. 
So that's why I have my paint your pet parties. Try to hold them at pet friendly venues so you can enjoy an evening with your pet. So, all right. So I'm going to do go into those little red stripes in his collar. So we'll just take a little bit of the red. You see that? And I'm just going to see how the red is pretty thick. So it's almost like um, magic marker quality. So this is not dripping. I'm, I'm going to leave those stripes there. Like that. This will be fun. He has this like, it's almost like a nautical looking little collar. Little nautical body. Cute. A few stripes there. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I'm just ad-libbing here. I just made a little rainbow. Even though it's not there, I just thought it would look fun to have, have a little rainbow collar. So I'm going to go back into the up around the collar. Just going to make sure that that continue that navy. That looks cute. It's a little bit of Americana. There we go. So now I want to go into his eyes and nose. I'm going to start mixing some of the browns. So I do a little bit of the, I make it a little bit more thick. I call it like gooey. So and I want to do a little bit of the black. The black in, I added a little bit of artist grade uh, watercolor black into the Crayola palette because the Crayola black n never is dark enough for me, so it doesn't have enough pigment in it. So, so now notice my paintbrush is kind of, it's, I call it gooey, it's not so drippy, so you have a little more control over. And I see how I leave that little piece of white? Do the same thing over here. Go up around that little piece of white, that little shine. You can do it, and if you if you didn't if you went over it by accident, that's okay. You can always like a little trick is um you can do some chalk, or we can try to remove it later when it dries with it. I'm using that same color that I did on the eyes. It's it's again just a little mixture of uh, brown and black, and just filling in the nose. Okay, and I'm gonna take that brush, same color, just I'm just I just added water, just watering it up, and I'm gonna go into the shadows. So I'm going to pan off that um, nose a little bit because I don't want it to be so dark just yet. So it is dark underneath here. Some brown. I'm going to mix it back, mixing it back again with the orange. Because now I'm back into the orange fur. So you want to tie the colors together. See how it's really dark in there? Underneath that ear. And this shadow around the face, see if this is dripping, that's okay. Add a little bit of orange in there. Around the chin. Just loop it around. Just go under. There's a shadow underneath that part of his face. So and this way his um, the muzzle uh, pops out a little bit more. You put a shadow right under the chin. Go up around the side. Yeah, he's a cute little Charlie dog. Yeah, I'm just going into the fur a little bit, some of the details. Same now down here with his his feet. I'm gonna take that the shadow. Now, when you traced it over, you have the lines to follow. So you could just take your paint and go back over the lines that you drew before. It kind of uh, gives you a little uh, like it's like a cheat sheet. You kind of already drew it, so you know where where to put the paints, where the shadows are. I'm gonna, again, that blue is still wet, so I don't want to go. I don't want to touch it. Um, I don't want to bleed. But if I was painting him not under time, I would uh, I would wait for that to dry. But I want to just do this for you guys, so you can see, just see how I I just skipped over that paw and I'm painting the shadows in the back. So these feet stay behind. I'm not going too dark just yet, you know? You don't wanna, you build up a few layers. You, for the most part, I do things in three layers. You can do it in more layers, but you know, 
this is just kind of how I do it. And now, like I said, I wanted to take a little bit of that black off his nose because it was a little too dark. So, see, I'm just wiping it onto the brush. I'm just taking that a little bit. Just, I'm almost using my paintbrush, cleaning it off. And I want to fill in this. This is pretty light, the, the brown that I have on there. Now I'm just kind of dragging my brush, like dry brushing it a little bit to get some of those fur strokes around him to make it look a little more natural and cute. So, and his little paws. There we go. So now I want to do, um, he's got this little bit of uh, brown under, it's like, like his lip, like it's like right here. So it's, my brush is pretty light and I just, it's not too much. You don't want to do too much, but I just kind of, it's almost just dirtying up the white to do fill up that little part under his nose. Yeah, there he is. And then just a little bit of shadow. This again, it's just that same brown with a lot of water. Water is your white. The, the lighter you want something, they have white in the palette, but I never use it. So I'm just going to go into these, that white, that was his muzzle. There's just a little bit of shadow. See, I just, I'm wiping it off because it's a little too dark. Just want a smidge of shadow into his, into the, his white muzzle, just along the sides there a little bit. Here's a little bit of unnatural look. Maybe his eyes here. All right, well, let's go into the background while the little guy dries. What we'll do is let him dry now and go on top of him with the sh more shadows and stuff like that. But we don't want it to bleed. Um, so I'm making the background purple. There's these stairs here. They're like metal stairs. I don't know. They're, the picture is not that exciting. I'm mixing the, the navy that I used in his jacket with purple. So... In watercolor, it, in any art, it's good to kind of mix the colors so they, they're they not so opposite of each other. It mix a little bit of the color from the same family. So purple and navy, they're kind of in the same family. They're in the cool water family. But I want him to pop off, so I don't want him to blend in with it. So I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more. Maybe add some more different blues in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good color. So he wants to be the, I want to make him the darkest. So I'm adding, see how I just added a ton of water into that? I want to lighten that up. And I'm just kind of like going into a rainbow. Purpley here. This is like, the top will be like this light cyan blue. Usually with the backgrounds, I have a lot of fun. And I always tell people, have fun. Um, you have all these colors to play with. Why not? Why not use them? And the background is the place to, to have fun with them. You could do splatter or whatever you want. So see how nice that um, it, it, the dog's uh, orange fur kind of pops off this blue? Because they're opposite uh, on the uh, color spectrum. These, this uh, cyan blue and that orangey. And I mixed in that little piece of purple I had in there. Yeah, fun. If, if you make a mistake, again, you know, if it's the wrong color, you're like, oh, I don't, I don't like it. It doesn't look good. You know, just get your paper towel. And so we'll make sure that this purple goes all the way across. There we go. I'll go back in underneath it into his shadows. But I like that uh, cyan blue, so I'm going to bring that down around Dougie, Charlie the dog's, and his nautical little jacket. And if you don't want to go into too much details, like like if you don't want to do the stripes in his jacket or something like that, I just say just do like a solid, solid color. You know, if 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 the dog has like a sweater with polka dots or flowers or something on it, you don't have to do exactly like the photo. Do it as best as you can. I would just kind of fill it in, and you can go back on top later, and just do some details. And now we want to go back into the purple. See how it drips? It kind of looks cool a little bit. It's like, like a tie-dye. I like like when it does that. Especially when you're doing the background. So I'm mixing all different kinds of blues. Go up around his ears. 
a purple U on the bottom here. See, I'm staying away from the purple because that's looking too close to his jacket. I want him to stand out. So, especially this blue looks good. So I changed my mind a little bit. It's okay. Artistic license. You can do whatever you want. It's your painting. You know, and you could have fun. The, the whole idea of painting is supposed to be relaxing and you have a nice time to just do something that makes you kind of not think of all the stress about everything that's going on. And they, they say scientifically you can't paint at the same time and be um, anxious because it's two different sides of the brain. So if you're anxious about life, about things, you're stressed about stuff, pick up a paintbrush, start drawing and painting, and guess what? You won't be thinking about it. <laughs> you won't be thinking about the thing you were stressed about because your brain can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> Apparently. Even though I say I, I, I can do a multitask, but you're really not, uh, your brain can literally only do one thing at a time, <laughs> even when you're multitasking. <laughs> so... I guess I'm multitasking. I'm talking and painting at the same time. So, <laughs> here we go. So, just go up, up into here, right, on, right under his collar. Just going right up to the edge. Sliding into his ear. So there's a little triangle here. Makes his ear pop off. My little birdie is knocking on the door over there. He wants to come out and play. <laughs> little birdie man. He's over there. Showing off his wings. He's so excited he just learned to fly. And now he's showing off. Flying around the room. That's why I had to put him put him in the cage for this demonstration. Because <laughs> he'd probably be walking in the paint. So I'm going right up to the edge. And then, see the top of that collar? I just realized I touched it. That's alright. No problem. See how it's just started bleeding? I just take my little paper towel. You can make your paper towel into kind of like a little point and just make it like so it'll sop it up. And that's fine. Go up to the edge. What you could do is just let that part dry. Same thing that happened over here. And you can use your paintbrush if you want. Make sure you go right up to his feet. Right up in here. Okay, so I want to do, I want to go back onto his little outfit and do some more shadows. So this is where you're going to follow the lines that you drew before. So I'm really going to go in thick. This is when I call the, the paint is pretty gooey. Um, that's why I, I drop a few uh, uh, things of water, just a few drops, so that the, it activates the paint, the watercolor paints before you start painting. So you can get that nice thick, almost like acrylic. So. Make sure that that shadows so it darkens up that area, makes his belly go in the back. And I'm taking a little bit of this up here and right, connects it up there. And I have these steps drawn in here. You can add those in if you want, or you can ignore them. I think they're kind of neat. They add a little bit of texture to the background. So I'm just going to go over those. And then I'm going to add a little, see how it started bleeding over here? That's all right. So I'm going to do a little bit of dark, dark purple for the shadow here. It's fun. Yeah, there's his little shadow. Yeah, I want to do just a little bit more on his little mouth so he doesn't, so you can see his little <laughs> so he doesn't look so sad. Give him a little bit of a happy face. You just pull, you make a little bit of a smile. Just a little bit. So there's my doggy for now. I'm going to um, sign off, but I and I will going to do a little bit more details when he dries. And uh, remember, if you want to join me uh, painting your pet, uh, just email me at petportraitfun.com. Uh, you can go ahead and send me a photograph. I will draw them up for you. If you want to order the whole do-it-yourself kit, you can do that as well. I can ship everything to you. Or I can just email you the drawing of your pet, and you can join me through Zoom or through FaceTime. 
and we can, or Facebook Live, and we could do a, a private one-on-one -on -one paint your pet party together. Again, we also do them in the city, so if you're around, uh, reach out to me, and we could do them in Central Park or at the Barking Dog, and you can bring your pet. So, anyway, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it, and you have a good day. Bye.